Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. In this video we are going to discuss about differential scanning calorimetry DSC which is a type of thermal methods of analysis. This is the part one. So let's start it. Here are the contents of current video. We'll see the introduction of DSC. Then we'll see the principle of DSC. We'll see various types of DSC. Then we'll see how DSC curve look like. Then we'll see the detailed instrumentation of DSC. And then we'll also see another type of DSC which is called pressure DSC. So first of all, introduction. Whenever an organic compound is prepared in laboratory, it is tested for its purity and stability. And one of the methods is its melting point determination. Another thing is the magnitude and direction of the heat change of the system, which is more difficult to measure accurately. And it requires more sophisticated type of apparatus that is calorimetry. The technique which is going to be discussed over here that give an interface between, very, between a very sophisticated type of calorimetry and the qualitative observations of melting points and heat changes. So here is the principle of DSC, a technique in which the difference in heat flow, that is power, to sample or to a reference is monitored against time or temperature, while the temperature of the sample in a specified atmosphere is programmed. Means in this technique, we measure how much power is given to the sample and reference so their difference is calculated and we get the enthalpy of what do you say transition whatever change is going to happen there so we can calculate the enthalpies of reaction while on x-axis there is temperature or time that is going to be changed the heat is supplied to the sample contained in the pan and similarly to the reference in another pan and there are two types of DSC that has been recognized yet and these are power compensated DSC and heat flux DSC so let's see what are these so let's see what is power compensated DSC in this type of DSC sample and reference these pans are heated separately by using individual heaters so you can see here this is power compensated DSC here is the sample pan here is the reference pan and here are the individual heaters so both of these pans are heated individually and the temperature difference is kept close to zero now we know that reference pan is normally empty and there is sample in this pan so when heat is supplied so definitely the temperature of reference pan will increase gradually while sample pan will not increase that type of gradually because there is present sample but we have to keep the temperature difference zero over here so what do we mean that we would have to supply more power towards sample pan so while the difference in electrical power needed to maintain means more power is supplied over here towards the uh, towards this sample pan so difference in electrical power needed to maintain equal temperature and here what is calculated change in power and that is equal to change in heat per per unit of change in time so this is actually measured in power compensated dsc and the second type is heat flux DSC. So what happened in it? Sample and reference pans, these are heated from the same source. So there is a single source 
and both of these bands are heated from this single source. And the temperature difference here that is measured. So delta T is measured here. And then this signal is converted to a power difference delta P using the calorimetric sensitivity. So either this work is done manually or our system, what do we say, that can do it for us. So here is the typical DSC curve you can see here. On x-axis there is temperature while on y-axis there is delta P which indicates the differential signal for power. And here is the curve. So we can get various peaks, various downward and upward peaks. So downward peaks these exhibit the endothermic process while upward peaks these exhibit the exothermic process. So here is the instrumentation of DSC and you can see here is the schematic diagram of DSC apparatus. So we can see here is our sample pan, here is our reference pan and here is the furnace or heaters. So as, a, as we have discussed earlier that the, there might be the individual heaters or there might be the common heater for these sample and reference pans and here we can man maintain the atmosphere so we can put gas inside we can make gas out of this uh, what do you say compartment so we can maintain the atmosphere in this compartment and here is the programmer programmer where the temperature is properly programmed and what do you say uh, here is the what do you say the signal uh, delta uh, which indicates the difference in signal so that is uh, what do you say sensed over here so here are the sensor amplifier and then that is recorded so here are the computer devices so the major parts of the systems are so these are four actually the DSC sensors plus amplifier the furnace and its temperature sensor the programmer or computer and the recorder plotter or data acquisition device which changes our signal that is change in temperature into difference in power so first of all the sensors for most of the DSC units thermocouples are used as sample and reference sensors if we are working at low temperatures then copper constantin or chromal alumal these can be used as sensors so these are the thermocouples while if if we are working at high temperatures then thermocouple might be platinum platinum 13 percent rhodium so this can be used now thermocouples so uh, you can see here in the diagram here is the arrangement of these thermocouples in different types of DSC so you can see over here so thermocouples are outside in all of these types so you can see in almost all of these types ther thermocouples are outside of the pans so they are not in direct contact with the sample some Metler and Sitaram DSC units so these are different brands so they use multiple thermocouples which are also known as thermopiles uh, like shown in B and C design so multiple thermocouples or thermopiles are being used here and what is the purpose of using these multiple thermocouples and thermopiles that is to increase the signal and there is only one exceptional case and that is the power compensated DSE which is shown in the last design D where the sensors are platinum resistors and the power is supplied to the sample and reference pan separately as I have already mentioned you about power compensated DSC. Now we'll see the characteristics of pans, crucibles and sample. So pans and crucibles of different materials are in use. If we are going to operate our run at low temperature, then we can use aluminium pans and lids. 
and these can be used below the melting point of aluminium and that is 660 degrees centigrade so you can see here these are the this is the aluminium pan with lit but if we have to work at higher temperature then we must have to use platinum or ceramic crucibles because their melting points are higher you can see here this is the platinum crucible and this is the ceramic crucible a standard experiment may involve sample of about 10 to 20 milligram powder means we can run this amount of sample or a disc punch from a polymer or sample may be introduced in the form of disc or it may be introduced in the form of bundle of fibers being placed in weighed leaded aluminium crucible and the total mass is recorded before start of the run so here is another type of dsc and that is pressure dsc by using the conventional crucible so if we fix its lid using a simple pressure so that can give us a sealed crucible which is capable of withstanding about 2 atm pressure but sometimes we we want to run our experiment at the elevated pressure so we use this pressure dsa so for the use of even higher pressure the technique of pressure dsc has been invented and what happened in it the entire DSC cell that is enclosed in a strong stainless steel container and that is capable of withstanding pressures from 1 Pascal to 7 megapascal, which is approximately 70 atm so that is very much high pressure it means that reactions that produce high pressure of gases are there is a reaction with the gases under high pressure so these type of reactions can easily easily be studied in pressure dsc and additionally if we want to suppress the vaporization phenomena so we can study the reaction in pressure dsc so what type of reactions can be studied in pressure dsc so these include the accelerated oxidative stability testing of materials like oils under high pressure of oxygen and the catalytic reduction of various organic compounds with hydrogen so such type of reactions can easily be managed in pressure dsc next is furnace and controller so many small dsc systems use a resistance heated furnace enclosure of silver so why we prefer silver that is due to the very high thermal conductivity of silver which ensures that there is a uniform temperature inside the compartment heating rates can be maintained between 0 to 100 kelvin per minute but normal rates are about 10 kelvin per minute one extra feature which is present there in dsc unit and that is the use of dsc below room temperature so definitely there is present a cooling accessory or refrigeration unit and for cooling phenomena we can use liquid liquid nitrogen or some other coolant and whenever we are using our dsc unit at this cooling mod so definitely we must have to pass our dry purge gas through the cell assembly because if we didn't do this there might be the condensation of water or ice onto the cells so this may occur next part is the computer and display the need for computer control and rapid data processing so that is very much necessary with DSC since the signal must be converted into Delta P signal using a calorimetric sensitivity stored in so in, in the software which is present in the system so actually we need to convert our signals into Delta P 
so and that is done by the use of the curves so the curves which are obtained so these must be analyzed for thermal parameters by differentiations for example to obtain onset temperatures and by integration to obtain peak areas so all of these things are done automatically by using the software present in the system so next one is reference material as we know that DSE is a differential method where the behavior of reference material or pan is compared with that of the sample and its pan so means we must need a reference in most of the cases small samples they may be run on DSE against an empty pan mean empty pan will behave as a reference but if we want to get better result then we must need to use some reference in the reference pan and what should be the qualities of reference material it should be inert and it must have the th it, it must have the similar thermal properties as that of sample so the reference is taken in reference crucible so which materials are being used as reference material so pure dry preheated alumina so that is giving the satisfactory result and the other material is carborundum means silicon carbide so that can also be used as a reference material so dear students this is all about the part one of DSC thanks for watching the video if you like my video then like it and if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it to get in touch with me for part two of DSC thank you very much